Welcome to Getting Real with Grady Jarrett, where me and my co-host Kelsey Conway talk about things football, everything in between, whatever you can think of, we're going to try to cover on this show. Today, we are visiting with someone very, very special to me, two-time national championship coach Dabo Swinney of the Clemson Tigers on the Clemson, South Carolina, my alma mater. You know, we got a good conversation lined up and I'm um, excited to hear, hear what he got to say. So here's our conversation with the Dabo Sweeney. All right, coach. So when I talked to you earlier this year about Grady, you shared a story that I want every listener to know about. And it was the recruiting story of Grady Jarrett. He and his mom came up for a summer camp. Uh, Grady, you can let us in on how many summer camps you did that year. But yeah. Grady Jarrett wasn't necessarily on your radar. Is that right, coach? And then after a couple days, he completely changed your mind. So can you tell us a little bit about how you found Grady Jarrett at that summer camp and basically how your relationship with him started? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, we, we knew of him, uh, you know, down at Rockledge and, and, and all that. Like we, you know, he was a, it's not like he was some, some, uh, you know, bad player. He was a. I'll show you how player. much you know. You call it Rockledge, Rockdale, yeah. man. Come on, coach. I mean Rockdale. I'm thinking. Of, I'm thinking of. Come on, I'm thinking man, of don't, do, Rock... don't do Rockdale like that. I'm thinking of Rockledge, Florida. Uh, Rockdale. Uh, so, so we knew of him. You know, he led the state in sacks, and you know, but but he wasn't really on our radar because he was undersized, and uh, you know, we were looking for a bigger guy. We had. Another guy committed already named Deshaun Williams, who is already, he's still in the pros as well. Deshaun was with Denver this past year and he was already committed. And so we were looking for just, you know, a bigger, a bigger body. And, uh, you know, he, he, he comes up to camp and Dan Brooks was our D tackle coach. And Dan was, you know, uh, he kind of whispered in my ear. And if I remember correctly, were you there just for a day? Yeah, I came for just yeah. that time. I came just for a day. He it was came a year just before for I came a day, day. Yeah. and he yep. did the morning practice and the afternoon practice. Like went to lunch, and then came back to the afternoon practice. And after that morning practice, uh, Dan Brooks came over to me, and Dan was like, "You know, Grady can prove we're all go swimming. We got this guy. We're gonna look at him. Now. He's on the underside. You know, he he, he was he was, uh, he was a little undersized. And basically, he was saying, look, he there's this kid over there, and look, he's undersized, and you know." you ought to at least look at him. I mean, this guy's, you know, blah. And so I, I come over there and I'm like, well, let me go check him out. And he's like, I know we probably don't. He goes, I know we probably don't have a spot for him. And, and our D coordinator at the time, you know, we were, we definitely, we were looking for a, just a different body type. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I, but I remember coming over there and I think he had just a white t-shirt on, you know, and he just had just an old t-shirt yep. and, I start watching him. So we're doing when we got to the OL deal and, and he was, he was undersized, but I'm just telling you, I sat there and even to this day, I hadn't seen anybody at our camp like that. And I, I watched him the whole session and I mean, absolutely dominate and destroy. I mean, I felt sorry for them kids that was out there. And, and, and not only would he win his rep, he wouldn't go wait in line, you know, because sometimes guys are bashful in those situations. And that's one mm -hmm. of the things I always look at. You know, you kind of see like, you know, sometimes them guys, they'll start, they'll start counting the line like, yeah, man, you're going and they, they want to go against the right guy. You know, Grady didn't care. Yeah. And Grady would get back. He'd just go cut right back in line because he was maximizing his time and he and he 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 knew he had limited time. And I mean, mm -hmm. he just went, he just kept going and kept going. And I'm just watching this kid and, I, and he had a look in his eye that, uh, you know, you don't see all often, you know, he had a, he, the look in his eye was a look of purpose, a man on a mission. And so I watched this whole thing. And when it's over, I went over to Dan Brooks and I said, good Lord. I was like, now tell me a little bit more about this guy. And he goes, hey, mama, mama's right over there. Mama's over there. You know, and I'm, oh, and I, and I, I'm watching his mom and his mom, I literally watched her a couple of times during the reps and his mom was like, you know, she's just like, she's like going through the drill yeah. with him, you know? Yeah. And yep. I mean, it should be, and she'd be like, 
you know and i mean yep. it was like she had as much intensity yep. as he did yeah she going, told me she told me before we went up there because you know um, coach rump was also recruiting me a little bit too and uh she told him before we got he said that's our last time coming up to clemson and like and like i remember taking that ride there and i just was like have, i just i just was focused the whole time because it's like you know I, i've you know i've Feel like I've done, you know, everything I could. You know, we would come to games and um, yeah. a couple of camps years before, yeah. but um, I was just like, man, I don't care. I'm just gonna let do my best and let the rest take let the rest take care of itself. And um, yeah. that's what it did. But yeah, she she said, look, this is the last time we coming up here to Clemson. You, you, <laughs> you go out here and do what you got to do, and uh, we let <laughs> yeah. let the rest take let the rest take care of itself. Yeah. So so Dan comes up to me after I'm like, oh my gosh, and I said, you know what? I said, Dan. And I don't know, I just had, it was just on my spirit. It was just, sometimes you just know when you know, you know? And I mean, I, we didn't have a spot for him. I knew it was going to probably upset the coaches, you know? And, uh, but I told Dan, I said, hey, I was like, man, we taking this kid. I said, I'm a, I don't know if we're going to get him. I said, I'm going to offer him. And he didn't have a million yeah. offers or anything yeah. like that. You know, we didn't go, we didn't, they weren't lined up to, to get him. And I'm yeah. like, but I said, I told Dan, I said, hey, you tell him I want to see him and his mom at my office. And uh, mm -hmm. so so they got him and his mom coming over to the office. In the meantime, we're huddling up in there in the staff room, you know, because because I'm telling them, I'm like, hey, we're going to take this kid, you know. And it's, they're like, they think I'm jumping the gun, you know. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm like, no. Guys, I've been to a million camps. I've seen a lot of great players. And, I, and but listen, and some of these guys were recruiting. And I know he's, you know, and, you know, we, one of the coaches in particular, D coordinator, he was, you know, he got, he was respectful, but he was mad. And he was like, coach, we, we, I'm begging you, please don't do this. We do not need another undersized player in this program. We have got to go and, you know, here's what we need, you know, blah, blah. And I said, well, mm -hmm. I said, here's what we're going to do. I listened <laughs> for a little while. And then I said, yeah. all right, here's what we're going to do. We're taking this guy. And I said, he's on me. He said, ain't nobody's fault but mine. Yep. I'm not going to hold anybody accountable for this kid. If he ain't good enough, there's nobody's fault but mine. I'm not going to hold anybody accountable for it, you know, but we're taking this guy. And I mean, so there was a little pouting and all this and that. And, and then I walked right in. I'm like, hey, Grady, good to see you. And his mom, you know, they, <laughs> you know, and so they had no idea uh, the discussion that just went on. Yep. So he comes in the office and I was able to offer him a scholarship. And that was a super cool moment for him and his mom. You mm -hmm. know, but he 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 made it happen and he earned it. His mentality, his mindset, his his grind, his vision, uh, his belief in himself, no matter what. And and again, I start I start what happened is I came in, I watched the tape real quick. Mm -hmm. I came back before I was like, man, I want to see this guy. I watched him, he dominated. Mm -hmm. I mean, he leads the state of, uh, of Georgia in sacks as a nose guard. He's a he, he's a state wrestling champion. I mean, this guy, he just had a drive to him that's unique for a young person. So I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but I knew I wanted him on my team. Yep. I wanted that. What he had, I wanted on our team. And not only did he come in, he came in with a great group, but Grady separated himself. And if you go back to that 2014 defense, we led the world. I mean, we were number one in everything you can think of. And, I mean, you're talking about Grady. DJ Reader, Carlos Watkins, Deshaun, Josh Watson. I mean, we had guys for days. Mm -hmm. uh, Pagano might have even been in that group. I can't remember. Yep. Grady separated himself. And, and he, was, he was an undersized guy, but he set the tone for everybody on that defense. He set the tone for that D-line. And, and to be honest with you, he, he set the tone. He came in here. He finished in 14, so he was here. 11, 12, 13, 14. We won yep. the league for the first time in 20 years. And he the became a starter that year as a, as a, as a rookie, as a freshman. And we led the league. We, we won the league first time in 20 years, won 10 games for the first time in 20 years. And I don't think it's a coincidence that, that, that all that stuff that he brought, he brought into our program. And, and I've told people this many times, and I mean it. If I could start over, my first team was in 09, all the way to this team of, last, of right now. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, you can start your program over again and you get to draft from your players that you've had, Grady Jarrett being my top three picks, yep. uh, you know, to, to start the program all over again. Mm -hmm. and, and that's who he was and about his business and just handled everything, uh, grinder in the weight room. And I told, I told Dan Quinn and um, um, 
the the, the GM the same thing. I said, when they were drafting Vic and and got Grady in the fifth round, I said, you know what? I said, Grady's y'all gonna love y'all gonna love Vic. Vic's gonna he's dynamic, he's explosive, he can go get that quarterback. He's got some unique talent. I said, but Grady's gonna change your community. Grady's mm-hmm. gonna make y'all better as men. He's gonna he's gonna be something you can build something around. And so it's been fun to watch him, you know, just be who he is, do the same thing that he's done. He did high school, he did it in college, and now he's done it as a pro. And 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 his best is still out there. Yes, uh, sir. So it's good that, that people are starting to get a chance to know who Grady Jarrett is. And I had a little fun the other day with Dexter Lawrence and Grady. Dexter <laughs> is like three times the size of Grady. And Dexter was standing here, and I said, and I looked at Dexter, I said, Dexter, when you grow up one day, you might have a chance to be like Grady. <laughs> so, yeah, that was funny, man. That was it's funny. been good, but yeah, I've made some wrong decisions as along the way, but that was a, that was a right one right there. Yeah, it's so good. Hey, Coach, I want to add something to that. Um, I don't know if you remember, you brought us into the office at the camp, and um, so we in there, and you, you offered us a scholarship, and you like, all right, so we're gonna offer you a scholarship. And my mom, she's sitting there, she's just like, like saying, like, all right, now go ahead and tell him you're coming. Don't you know what I'm saying? Don't tell him you're coming. And I was like, and I, I, in my head, you know, I didn't want to be like, what you, you know, what people say, like, too thirsty now. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I was like, all right, um, we're gonna think about it. And we got back in the car. I was like, I was like, I'm gonna think about it, blah, blah, blah. And we finished the meeting. Man, we got back in that car, boy. And my mom was looking at me like, Boy, you better call that man right now telling you coming. <laughs> so I ended up calling like a, a day or two later, like committing and stuff. But that was, that's so funny. She she tell that story and be like. That's why you should always <laughs> listen to your mama, even to this day. Well, that's, yes, that's what I was going to ask you, coach. In that meeting, when you asked to see him and his mom, who was more impressive? <laughs> uh, oh, his mom. No question. No, there's no doubt about that. His mom is, she's, she is unbelievable. Uh, I mean, she's. I mean, I just wish I, I'd vote for her for president, to be honest with you, because she, <laughs> she she whips some things in shape quick. Yeah. Uh, yes, she, she, is, yeah. she is so smart and is just such a has such a great heart and such a great communicator. But she's tough. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's no nonsense. There ain't no bull crap with, with her now. Uh, yeah. She, especially when it comes to, to Grady and her mm-hmm. kids. I mean, she's she's a you know, she's a lawyer. Uh, she's, she's, she's got a lot of, you know, experience in her life, but, uh, she, she's somebody I could lean on cause she's going to tell you straight up and, yeah. and she going, and she's, she's not one of these coddlers. She's not yeah. one of these mamas that, you know, everything's always great. And no, I mean, I used to feel sorry for greater some greater sometimes <laughs> so she, she literally would come. So on Wednesday nights, we do family night and on, I mean, every Wednesday, his whole career, she would drive from Atlanta and she would watch practice every week. And she yep. did it every week. And and so, and I'd see her over there. And, and I mean, and I mean, this is a D lineman's mama. So she knows mm-hmm. what inside drill is. She knows what one-on-one pass rush is. She knows those things. <laughs> mm-hmm. She understands team good on good competitive stuff. And, and I mean, there'd be some days I'd walk over there. I'd say, Hey Lisa, how you doing? And we'd talk and, 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 uh, and I'd be like, how about my man Gray Day? Had a good day. No, coach. No, he no. He was on the ground too much today. I didn't like that. He was on the ground too much today. I'm gonna let him know. You know, or, you know, so she was just she was, she was that mama. You know, there was no, you didn't have to worry about no no coddling uh with her. She's about her business, but that that drive, you know, um uh, that that she instilled in him, and you know, I think a lot of his passion comes from her. Uh she's she 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 want, wanted it for him as much as as he wanted, but I think she saw the work that he put in mm-hmm. every day, mm-hmm. and and she didn't want him to be discounted because he was short, he was this and that, you know. And uh, if you could cut Grady open and see his heart, he's six foot five, he's three thirty, mm-hmm. and and that's that's what's beautiful about the game of football. You know, football players come in all shapes and sizes. You know, I I, I got I've got a guy named Hunter Renfro that showed up here. 5'10", 155 pounds, and he benched 135 one time. And now he's a starter for the Raiders, mm-hmm. yep. you know, and, and, and it's a, but it's, it's about become, it's the best version of you and yep. believing in yourself and, and, and having a drive, you know, that's, that, that separates you from other people. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's what Grady has. Coach, on that note, um, sorry, Kelsey, uh, you used to tell a quote to us, and it always stuck with me. 
And um, I want you to kind of elaborate on it because for the listeners, you know, who are athletes or just, you know, whether, you know, working, working every day, whatever they want to do, um, whatever they want to do in life, you used to tell us, I want to do what I can while I can. So when I cannot, I will not wish I would have when I could have. Right. And to me, that always resonated like have no regrets, but I want you to go deeper into that. So, um, because that's just something po so powerful to me and, and it'd be days where I'd be like down, not feel like doing something and, um, or whatever it may be, but that just always kind of get me over the hump or whatever it may be, a um, bad day of training camp or, you know, early morning workout, whatever it is, just go in on that for me a little bit, Coach. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, <laughs> so, I you want to look at, you know, you see that? Yep. What is that? So time, the time. That's right. That's a little hourglass <laughs> right there. Yep. All right. And listen, we don't want to wait when the sand is gone, right? No, sir. What, what's the there? And I don't know. I don't know who the who the uh, who the person is. I can't remember who it was. What president or general, or whatever they said. The time, the time to fix the leak in the roof is when the sun is shining, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's too late once it starts pouring. And, yep. and, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to get serious when the sand is out of the glass. Yeah. You know, you get one time to go to college. Yep. You get one time to be a professional football player. We mm -hmm. get one life from the bigger picture of things. Mm -hmm. We get one. This ain't no dress rehearsal, right? Yep. You get one time to be tw in your twenties. Mm -hmm. One time. And so I will do what I can while I can so that when I cannot, I will not wish it. I would have when I could have. You know, I, I, how many times have you heard me say, listen, I, I, that's great and I hear you, but you know, I care more about the 30 year old version of Grady Jarrett than I do this 19 year old version. Yes, sir. Right? And that 30 year old version of you is counting on me, all right, mm -hmm. to, to in this moment. And he's also counting on you. You know, I'm, I'm in the middle of exit meetings right now. I'm, I'm going through the whole team and you know, you know how it is. You're talking to these young guys and and man, everybody, everybody wants everything right now. And, and everybody's, you know, looking ahead. And I'm like, listen, we got to We got to do, here's what we got to do right now. Mm -hmm. You know, let's don't wait till it's over. I can't tell you how many guys I've coached over the years that all of a sudden, man, their senior year and they ready to be great now, or yeah. it, it's seniors over. Now it's like, all right, they, what do they do? They go train, they get elite with their nutrition. They get to train, man, they go on a, they go, they, they, and they go spend their money to do that when they've mm -hmm. had this here all along. So they want to go and, oh, man, I'm going to really train now. I'm going to really just, I'm like, what, what do you mean? You know, don't wait till then. It's too late then. Mm -hmm. Do what you can now. Don't have any regrets. Yep. You know, become, you know, buy into to doing everything you can while you can. It's too late. And the same thing in our life, man. Don't wait till you're on your deathbed, deathbed to appreciate your family. Yep. All right? Don't wait till you're on your deathbed to, say I'm sorry yeah. or to, to, to show some, some kindness, yeah. you know, don't wait until, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you have, you know, the, the means that you think you want to have to serve someone. All yeah. right. You know, don't wait, do what you can while you can. All yes, right. Sir. Because you don't get that time back. And, uh, and that's how you have no regrets. And that's just kind of how I've tried to live my life. That's what I've tried to teach as you know, every single day, Hey, listen, you get one chance to be a freshman. Yes, sir. You can't come back and be a freshman again. All right. So here's what you need to do. Cause you, when you get to be a senior, don't have any regrets about how you handled yourself in that power hour. Mm -hmm. You know, everything matters and you should be building upon year after year, moment after moment, doing what you can, you know, while you can, because there will come a time when you cannot. Yep. All right. Yep. And it's the same thing for you. I tell you the same thing. Now this older version of you now, how mm -hmm. old are you now? Uh, 28 this month. 28. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, the 30 year old version that you still counting on you to do yep. the right things right now is when you need to be having a good financial plan right yep. now is when you need to be, you know, uh, 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 maximizing the opportunity that you have as a professional athlete, the platform that you have, the yep. podcast, speaking yep. truth to people, serving people, you know, yep. this is a platform that's a blessing. Yeah. Don't wait till it's over to say, man, I wish I'd have done this, this, and that. 
Take yeah. advantage of the opportunity you can right now while you can, you know, because right now the sun is shining. This yes, is when you fix the leak in the roof, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, because you can't play pro football forever. Now yeah. is when you want to build those relationships and, and networking and, and all those things and just having some fun doing it. Don't yes. wait till it's over to enjoy it. Enjoy it now. Enjoy mm -hmm. camp now. Enjoy the training now. You know, enjoy the discipline that you have to apply to your nutrition now. You know, enjoy it. Yes, sir. Uh, it it's all part of it. And that's just a mentality that I think you got to have because uh, it goes quick. Yep. Coach, do you think you could uh, give Grady, Jared, and I a recording of that to wake up to every day? It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you got me all fired up inside. But you can tell you can tell that all the players that come out of your program truly embody that. And I wanted to switch to more looking back at all that you have accomplished at Clemson. And you talked about how if you could, you know, redo your program and start over, how Grady would be in your top three. There have been 49 players since 2012 that have been drafted in the NFL for, out of Clemson. And I know you're obviously looking forward always, but how much did having players like Grady reach the level that they have in the NFL and, you know, a couple of the other uh, Clemson stars in the NFL, how much has that helped you from a recruiting standpoint of building what you have now? And how much of a role do people like Grady coming back or being on the field of the national championship games play a role in what you're building at Clemson? And do you ever just look around and you're like, yeah, I'm doing all right. We got, we got NFL you over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, one of my favorite things to do every year is when we have pro day, I, mm -hmm. I love giving a presentation to all the, the owners or GMs and the coaches that come. I love doing that. I, I, I put a presentation together because I want them to know they're coming from a unique place. You know, this is not a, this is an uncommon place. It's not the norm here. And, and I want to, and I, and I, and I have a moment to really kind of, you know, I can say that, but how do I quantify that? And, and so we talk about the things that quantify that. So you mentioned one little step. So since 2009, that was my first year, we've actually had, I think it's 108, 108 players either drafted or signed as a free agent. Okay. So since I've been the head coach 12 years, uh, I'm second in draft picks and I'm second in first round picks. All right. So that's number one but we've had 108 guys that have either been drafted or signed as a free agent and 80% of them have made the roster 80%. Okay. And that's now, what does that mean? Hard to do. Well, well, first of all, 1.7% of college players play in the NFL, but 80% of the guys who've gotten a shot from our program over 12 years have made it. All right. And I'm talking about, we've had some phenomenal free agents like, Deshaun Williams, they were talking about. Uh, Adam Humphreys makes $9 million a mm -hmm. year. He was a tryout. Jerron Brown played eight, nine years. I mean, we've had uh, Tyler Shatley is, is a starter. Yeah, for the Jag He's going on year eight for the, for the Jacksonville Jaguars in the offensive line. I mm -hmm. mean, we've had a bunch of free agents. So it's not just the drafted guys. And then we've had some guys, fifth rounders, you know, like Grady, mm -hmm. uh, that a lot of people passed up on. And we've had, we've had the first rounder. So we've been a developmental program. So in 12 years, I've not gone through the transfer market. I've not signed junior college players. We've signed high school kids and we've developed them. And so I've never had the number one recruiting class in 12 years, ever. Alabama in 12, the past 12 years has had the number one recruiting class 11 out of 12 years. We've never had the number one. My average recruiting ranking since I've been the head coach over 12 years we're probably around nine or 10. So we've been good, uh, but yet we've beaten Alabama in two out of three national championships. Okay, so it's not just about, yes, it's not just to let them know. <laughs> it's not, let them know. And, 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 and well, I mean, we won two years ago, we won mm -hmm. 44 to 16. And guess what? They had Jalen Hurts, Tua, mm -hmm. Mac Jones, Devontae. Well, they Rose, had them all, Coach. They had them all. Josh Jacobs, Dave. So it's not just about players. You got to have players, but it's more than that. And so yep. we've won doing it in an uncommon way. And so, so the second winningest team in the country the last 10 years has been Clemson. Alabama's been first. They've been unbelievable. So, but us in Alabama have been the two winningest programs on the field. But off the field, nine out of the last 10 years, 
we've been top 10 academically, Clemson, Duke, and Northwestern. So there's one program that's doing it at that level on and off the field the last decade, and that's Clemson. So we're unique, we're uncommon. And then, oh, by the way, second in draft picks, second in first rounder since I've been a head coach in the country. So yes, it, it, it's important because they're young people and they all have dreams, right? They all want to go play in the NFL. That's great. That's great. And so you want to have a track record that can you can say, hey, look, hey, we, we've produced a lot of great players. But you know what I love more than anything? A track record of producing great men. Yes, sir. All right. And I, and I think I think that we've done, you know, there's no perfect people. And you deal with many young people, you're always going to have, uh, you know, some, some that, that don't turn out the way you want. But we've produced a lot of great men, and that's that's the that's what our program's all about. You know, we want to we want to win a bunch of games, but we want to have fun doing it, and we want to equip men to go be great husbands, great fathers, great citizens, you know, for life uh, through this game. And that's what we've done. We've kept the main thing the main thing for 12 years. I'm starting my my 13th year as the head coach, my 19th year, and so consistency. Yes, That's what we want. You know, we want to win the national championship every year. It'd be great. Uh, we just want to be consistent. We want to be one of those teams that's always got a shot. And when we started this program in 09, we had not won 10 games in 20 years. We had not won a league championship. Now we've won – we're 10, 10 plus win seasons in a row, which is the third best in the history of college football. All right? We yes, had sir. the third winningest decade in the history of college football, and Grady was a big reason for that. But you win with people. All right, you win with people. Uh, too many people put too much focus on all the measurables. Mm -hmm. What I've learned in my career is, is how to evaluate the immeasurables. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, if you, can, if you can get that right, you got a chance to be special. Awesome, awesome. Well, Coach, in all that time, all, all that time in my time, I don't know if you can remember back, is there any um, one particular play or – game that I had like during my time at Clemson that you know you just kind of could remember or you know if you want to cut something on for the guys just let them see a little little bit of GJ go to work what what, what you cutting on coach oh I put I put some Grady Jarrett clips on for the fellas <laughs> along the way man yeah uh, you know I remember uh, that that first ACC championship game you know you you, mm -hmm. were, you were awesome in that game I remember the uh Russell Athletic Bowl you know, nope. we weren't supposed to win. Remember that? We were supposed mm -hmm. to get blown out. We won but, 40 to 6. Yep. I, remember, I remember that performance by you. But you know what I remember more than anything? My favorite Grady Jarrett moment ever is, mm -hmm. is, is, is right over here uh, in my office. And that is, you know, he made a big play. We got a huge stop. And he's coming off the field. And, man, I just jumped up. And he – he almost flipped me over. <laughs> yeah, uh, that might have been on South Carolina. I don't know, senior year. Oh, yeah. We got to so, go back and check. Yeah, 2014, you know, we had lost to South Carolina. We yep. had a bad run. Yeah. And we had all those great seasons, but yep. we just – we had we had not beaten those guys. Yeah. And that 2014, man, we we got it done. And yep. I and, and I remember just – y'all remember, remember I came in there and I told y'all before, and I was like, hey, man, it's the freaky. Y'all want to change it? Then go yep. do something about it. And, mm -hmm. I mean – Y'all's mentality in that game, we dominated the game, but I remember that moment, and, man, you were coming off the field, and it was just like, you know, and that was yep. a big deal to win that state championship, and and I just jumped up. Man, Grady had me like yep. – Kelsey, I'm going to get you that there. picture, too. Uh, yeah, I need, to, I need to see this picture. picture. Yeah, man, it's awesome. Yeah, grab that picture right there. It's right there. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great one, and, uh, you know – he gave he gave he gave he gave me a hand wedgie too. He was he had me all jacked <laughs> up. Uh, so there it is right there. Look at that. Oh, that yeah. is amazing. Isn't that yeah, a great that's pick? awesome. That's so awesome. That's you want to know my for. moment? That was that moment right there because you know that's that's two, that's two that's two grinders. Yep. That that you know he believed in me. I believed in him, and you know. We 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 set we we did something together. Uh, it was pretty awesome. And uh, you know, again, Grady didn't get to win a national championship, uh, but but he's been a captain. Uh, yep. You know, because he he's a, we don't win a national championship if it wasn't for uh, the Grady Jarretts of this program. Man, seeing y'all yeah, win them natties, sure. man, that's been one of the proud, most proudful things. You know, being a former Tiger, man. So I just hey, guess I feel what? Just a part of guess part what? of much of. He ain't going away. Yes, sir. He ain't going away. Yes, sir. We keep I love it.
We keep we I, keep going. Keep going. We keep starting over every year. Keep starting over every year. Yep. You know, be setting the tone, learning, growing, getting better. We don't ever arrive, man. You gotta Never. keep starting, gotta prove it every year, right? Like yes, you sir. do your job, go prove that you deserve to be the start and D tackle for the Falcons. You shouldn't, you ain't entitled to that. You gotta yes, go prove that. Yes, and if sir. you ever lose that mindset, you get passed by. Yep. Right? It don't matter what you did. What we talk, we talk about what? Windshield mentality, right? Yep. yep. Who cares what happened? Nobody cares. Scratch that. Right? Nobody cares. We beat Alabama 44-16 two years ago. Guess what? Nobody cares. Yep. All right? It's all about what's next. Yep. They people forward. forget that real quick. All right? Y'all mm -hmm. was in the Super Bowl. Guess what? How'd that work out the next year? Nobody mm -hmm. cares. Yep. All right? You got to start over. You got to recommit, reinvest, refocus every single year, every single day. Yes, all the sacks you had, they don't carry over. Guess what? Yep. Them bad plays you had don't carry over either. Yep. You know, you get a chance to go learn and grow every single time. And that's just a mentality. You know, yep. to me, that's what drives a Tom Brady. Yep. You know, like just just the just falling in love with the journey, you know, and just what it takes. You know, that's what you gotta love. Absolutely. And then the games are great and those are moments, but but it's 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 what it took to get there. That's what we're built for. We're built for the climb. That's what we're built for. Yes, sir. And, and you got to love that. I love it. I'm like ready to go run through a wall <laughs> right now, coach. But uh, hey, we just look, wanted to look say. At, look what else I got in my office. This is the coach. Oh, yeah. We just <laughs> got, got this. Yeah. This yeah. is a Clemson Falcons combined helmet. Tiger Paw Falcons. Look at that. Look at that. 5097. Oh, this is going in my office right here. Oh, yeah. How yeah. cool is this? Yeah, that's sweet. That's sweet. We just brought that up to him this past weekend. Oh, yeah. Is Grady, awesome? AJ, yeah, we got we got some good Clemson Tigers here. Well, Coach, we appreciate AJ, AJ's, you. AJ's AJ's pretty good, isn't he? I <laughs> like AJ. <laughs> he doing dang good for it. He's gonna be real good for it. I'm excited. I told I told Grady. I said, <laughs> you know, uh, I told Dimitrov. He, he actually called me like a couple days before. Like I, I knew they were gonna take him if he uh -huh. was there. And uh, I told Grady. I said, hey, you gonna like this guy now? He, I said, he's like you, he's about his business. He's like, yep. he's about his craft. He wants to win. He don't like to lose. He's about his business. Yeah. Good one. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. We know he's got a good person to follow after in Grady. Well, coach, thank you so much for joining us on the Getting Real with Grady Jarrett podcast. We definitely got to learn a little bit more about Grady with what this podcast is all about. So best of luck to you as you guys continue to be on that climb. We'll be cheering for you and the rest of the Tigers. All right, hey, well, y'all, hey, listen, y'all have me back on sometime. Yes, sir, we'll Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Thanks right. so much, coach. Thank yes, you, love you, man. Thanks for helping us. Love you, man. I'll see y'all soon. Yes, sir. Well, like I asked Dabo, I kind of wish that I had my phone recorder out so I could have recorded about half of what he said to set it as like my alarm clock every morning to wake me up because holy cow, how do you not want to like run through a brick wall when that guy talks? I mean, obviously I've heard many interviews with Dabo. I've, I've gotten a chance to interview him, but listening to him talk to you in the way that he did as, you know, actually a coach and the words of wisdom. Yeah. I totally get it. And I mean, if I if I have kids and they play football, I, I'd want them to go play for Dabo Sweeney. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I think the thing that stood out to me most in that conversation with Dabo that I want to ask you about is he said that when you came up for that camp, that you were not only, you know, just – undersized but you know you were on his radar but you weren't really but what really caught his eye was when he was watching the d-line drills that not only would you completely dominate your rep you finished a rep and then you got right back in line to do it again mm -hmm. and you know i watch you at practice every day and i see the way you attack those position drills and i, I just wondered were you always that way in terms of just like a relentless motor and just like I am going to outwork you or was it like uh this is my sh this is my one shot to impress Dabo so I better go all out here or is that just like that's who you are that's just it's really who I am and to be honest I didn't even realize that I was doing that until he brought it <laughs> to my attention I just was so locked in on his own and I didn't know who was watching me he came 
after the fact, you know, we had already started one-on-one -on -one drills and stuff like that. Obviously the coaches are there on, um, but, um, you know, I'm really at a spot where I was just kind of controlling my control and, you know, I was just in the zone, like guys are lined up. They, they just ain't stand a chance. They really didn't stand a chance. <laughs> I knew who was the ones that was committed to Clemson already. Um, I knew who like was some, you know, top rank guy. I'm talking about, I wanted them all. Like I knew at the end of the day that I was going to put my best foot forward. And like, even if a guy stopped, kind of stopped me a little bit, tried to, I was going to finish that thing, push it all the way to the end. Cause I, you know, my mind was made up. This is my like, going to be my last time coming up here. Like, I, I feel like, you know, at a time, you know, Clemson, they flirting with you. You know, you got a coach here like you hear coach don't want you. So it's kind of like they, 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 they keep you close, but you know, not really committing to you. And it was just like, you know what, I'm going to just do what I got to do. Let the rest take care of itself. And um, so, yeah, you know, but in when I'm in that moment in that mode, like I just, I just was just locked in, you know, it wasn't even a thing to be honest. It wasn't even a thing like, let me peep, see if he looking to go to, yeah. no, I, it was just me focused on who was in front of me at that moment and beating him and beating him. And, um, you know, it's just nobody stood a chance. Nobody stood a chance. Oh. Well, you know, uh, for anyone that's listening, that's a current athlete, you know, trying to make it in the league or, mm. you know, at the college level, obviously my, my experience is different, right? I didn't play football, but I did play lacrosse in college. And mm. I remember I used to hate the teammates that would, when we would do like a, a walkthrough and coaches, because of they can only be with you for a certain amount of hours, right? We yeah. would do a, a throw around just for extra mm -hmm. work. And I used to hate the, the girls on my team that would just slack off because our head coach wasn't there. Like yeah. the, their level of play yeah. when the coach was there was so much better. It just used to irk me to my yeah. core. So to listen yeah. to you just kind of say like, you mm -hmm. didn't even know if someone was watching. Yeah. Like, I, th I think people don't realize when you're yeah. an athlete and you're trying but, to impress your coaches, like they see you all the time. Yeah, even they when see you, you they, and they gonna they're know. not watching. And they're going to know the difference. Like the work yeah. you put in with nobody watching, it's going to show itself when it's time to go on game day. You know, you can't, mm -hmm. especially the professional level as you continue to, you know, rise, rise up and then we your talent just don't get you there no more. It's going to take you putting in that work with nobody looking. And at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to, you can try to fool anybody all you want to do, like, but you got to put that work in, especially when nobody looking. And all, you know, you could ask anybody about you, right? We've heard from uh, Ray Lewis, your mentor, to Dabo Sweeney, to, you know, your former coach, Dan Quinn, and, you know, coordinators. All they say is, you know, your work ethic, but... I wanted to ask you, you seem like the kind of guy who, you know, you talked about how if a fan sees you come up, say, hey, we see what mm -hmm. you do in the community. We follow you on Instagram. You're dancing, you're cooking, you know, you're mm -hmm. a very outgoing type of guy. But when you are on the football field, you don't do a lot of talking and mm -hmm. you, you know, you mean business. So is there a, a, a switch that goes on in your head when you take the field for practice or a game or just mm -hmm. kind of let us, let us in on a little bit of what Grady Jarrett's mindset is like when he takes the football field. Yeah. Like it, it really is a switch. And, and I tell, you know, I tell people close to me all the time. It's kind of like, it's almost like a, like scary a little bit because, you go, you know, I am a very personable person, a family person. I know how to interact with people very well. I like to do, you know, regular things, you know, ch chill, hang out, have a good time. Like you say, you see me cooking, traveling, whatever it may be. And I always try to have a good time, I'm, you know, and I, I like to have fun, you know, but we you know when it comes to, you know, me putting in work and especially um, doing what I got to do to take care of my family and playing football, something that I love and wanting to compete and be the best in my, be the best at what I do, period. Um, it takes me going to that place, you know, going to that place of uh, extreme focus, um, like competitive, like competitive, like you, you, like my um, my sisters and brother, they teach me all the time, say like, <laughs> if I got to move something around the house, it just feels so heavy or like, um, or like to bump my toe on the wall, it's just, I ah, put me on the ground. But they're like, man, how you do all this on the field, but you can't even do, <laughs> yeah. but man, man, I get on that field, I feel like, like even like, you know, whether it's playing through injuries, getting bumped here and there, like I just, it's like a, it's like a mode where you just don't, not even don't feel nothing, but it's just like it's just, it's like super strength. Like everything that you train for is built for this moment. So I have a good way of channeling when it's time to go and uh, saving that for for when it's time to go. And um, for them, um, 
you know, for the four quarters, however long it take for the um, to finish the to finish the game, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. And to be honest, to be sometimes I don't even know how I do certain things or um, go through certain, but it all comes through my preparation, whether it's in the weight room, film room, um, you know, just getting the body back healthy, doing rehab, or for doing a little surgery at the season or something like just that all, it all leads to, to, to that, you know? And uh, so I, I've been, um, I think I have a good uh, balance of knowing like when to turn it off so I can be present, you know, with, with my family and friends that's close to me and um, be able to interact with people uh, on a personable level and, you know, just in everyday, every, everyday life, you know, and I, I and I'm, 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 I'm thankful that I, I, I know how to separate the two, but when it's go time, it's go time, you know, it ain't, and it ain't no love, you know? Um, <laughs> I but- love that. I love, I love the whole attitude that, you know, you have and, you know, listening to coach Sweeney talk about why that's important and why that can separate players was really en- enlightening to hear. And I thought it was, I thought it was just, an incredible interview that we had with coach Sweeney, but before I let you go, I got to ask you something since we're on the topic of it. Okay. We're getting real here. That's the name of the podcast. Does, uh, does, do you feel like you're still underrated a little bit in the NFL? No, without a doubt, without a doubt goes without saying, but at the end of the day, um, it's always the, the, the truth, like it always come through, you know, in the light, like uh, in due time, in due time, I'm gonna receive what I what I'm supposed to receive, you know, and I'm gonna just keep grinding. But the thing about it is, I never needed anybody, you know, validation or something like that. You know, you know, people will respect me. I know people around me respect me, but as far as being um, uh, whatever underrated over whatever it is, I I, I notice I I know where I am. I'll say that. It's all that know? matters. Yeah. And um and I'm only gonna continue to get better. And, and increase in every every way, you know, as a player and get better on the field, off the field, you know, whatever it may be. And uh, I know what I am, um, the people, my team, um, whether it's representatives, family, whatever it is, they know who we are. And the thing about me, I never settle for anything in my life and I won't. So um, um, I let time, you know, things go out. You know, in due time, they go how they go. And um, so I'm, I'm excited for what the future holds. I'll say that. I kind of feel like I should just disable this mic because that is the definition of a mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. All right, Grady. Well, this was another great episode of the Getting Real with Grady Jarrett podcast. We had on... Clemson head coach Dabo Sweeney got to learn a little bit more about how he recruited Grady and what makes Grady the great person and player he is. So appreciate y'all tuning in.